All right, good. How I, doing? I hated Hamilton. Hate, hate, hate. I loved the you King. You hated Hamilton? The rest of it set it on fire. I hate I, I don't like it when they advance the plot with just singing. Like music, music is kind of a bad, like I need you to advance the plot with words. And if you just do it with singing or some sort of, I, I just could get completely lost. And I realized like a half an hour later, I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I, I have no idea. And I, I can't, and I didn't, I didn't think the whole, whatever the heck that thing was that said, I, there was some really cool aspects. The King though is phenomenal. It's quite literally the only show tune I've ever listened to in my car by myself, by choice. The, the yeah. king's part is that is awesome. They're hilarious. The three, yeah. they're hilarious. Yes, absolutely. I'm just realizing how not cultured I am, uh, so I, I, I'm taking it in. <laughs> Hi, me too, Chris. <laughs> I don't know if that's true. Everybody Matt, has their turn your inputs a little. What'd you say, Matt? Can you turn up your inputs a little? You're a little quiet. Yes. Oh no, you're good, Chris. You're the one who's quiet. I am okay. Give me just a sec. Oh, never mind. So no, Matt sounds like liquid gold. It's the hair. Like always. It's like Samsung. You cut it off and it just it's turns screechy. <laughs> um, I cut my hair off. I I think I'm doing all right. Yeah, I'm gonna slowly just like dial it back. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You don't want to do it all. No, it's so cool when you go in and it's like the whole thing just goes. Whoosh. Did you guys quit rubbing that in? I mean, stop. Tim, oh yeah, it's so, it's so difficult. Gosh, uh, you barely. Don't get the other angles. Oh, all right. Thanks. Thanks for showing us. Can we get the back to <laughs> you. Got it. Thank you got it. <laughs> that's, that's, that's probably a good segue for the the title of our keto panel, which is the Fail Horseman. Um, and so Tim with Red Siege, Chris with Forty North, and Matt with Open Security. And then, of course, uh, me with Grim. Each one of us has created, founded, and runs um, a oh, um, an offensive security consulting company. And we have had many trials and tribulations, starting with huge fuck ups and mistakes, right? And what's cool is we talk about it all the time. And so I thought it'd be fun for us to share a lot of these experiences with the crowd that we've had. Um, and so, Tim, since you physically show the most, like pain with the loss of hair and the gray <laughs> um, we're gonna let you 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 kick it off yeah we had um i mean i'm in a, i'm in a hotel i'm actually teaching this week so I'm, i've cordoned myself on my classroom after finishing <clears throat> on time a little bit early we're, we're okay uh so if you hear other stuff it's rando hotel people anyway um i think one of the, the biggest ones early on is is trying to nail down some of the agreements like you're like i, I don't i don't know what i'm doing here I, don't, I have no clue what i don't know and i remember the first one that really bit me in the butt for like all right got the contract all signed like you know still early on still super excited about every single contract that's being signed and we get to the kickoff call and they're like by the way we need off our testing we're like yeah but you know the contract's already signed i'm like yeah but we need to change that like contracts already signed and you know i i don't have the capability to say no we're not doing the gig anymore and they're like oh great now we're doing this we're uh, gonna stay up uh, all night for multiple weeks and uh and then work and, and that brings uh, a little bit of pain so yeah there, there's there's number mm -hmm. one for tim so it gets to a point where like you just don't have to work off hours anyways because i think I, we're still there we still do it just to make people happy it seems like I, oh, I we, we, we do so now now in the contract if you want off hours we charge you extra so yeah. we've had three ever take us up on that and we try to bring the pain we're like look you want off hours it's gonna be 25 percent and every once in a while they're like fine done you're like oh yeah oh, damn that's it. exactly what we do i don't <laughs> want to like infosec is so so prone to burnout to begin with and i mean like if you're gonna make your team do off hour testing, you're already, burn if you're an infosec, you're already burning out, right? Are you really gonna do that? So yeah, we do the exact same thing. So we're gonna make it as, as painful for you to require us to test off hours as possible so that, you know, we're gonna share the burden here. Yeah, we, 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 I mean, one of the things we try to do to unfail that is like, look, we'll, 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 we'll give them some of the, bunch of the money to the consultant. So it's, a, it sucks, but it ideally sucks a little bit less when they can, I don't know, buy fishing poles or whatever the hell, I don't know. I always give them a couple <laughs> days off. <laughs> so, uh, Chris, what's, uh, yeah, no, yeah. What, what's the, well, first of all, I think we're lucky that none of us work in IR. 
because uh, you talk about burnout. Yeah. IR burns you out even up, faster, <laughs> right? We're talking like <laughs> one to two years of life expectancy because of that challenge. And that was something we did at Grim. Is we actually said, we're not going to do IR because uh, the management challenge and that burnout piece, I didn't, I didn't see how I could do that to our people. Um, so back back to you, Chris. What what was uh, what was one of your big fails? Um, I think especially when we were first really starting, we were trying to figure out like how do we do marketing? Like how do we do like get leads and get work? And um, like still to the day, that that's a mystery. I, I would say. I mean, we do we do a lot of um, like blog posts and stuff. We're like, do, I mean, do we need to get out there and like pay for something? And one of the first things that we uh, got suckered into was hey, uh, we have this like big luncheon conference thing full of like CISOs just for you to talk to all day. It's a 10K buy-in and you can go there for like lunch and talk to people and stuff. We're like, or it's like more breakfast and lunch. We're like, you know what? We'll, we'll try something different, see how it works. Um, worst decision like that we've ever made. Like we went there, we talked with people like, Z, like literally nothing came out of it. Um, it was basically a bunch of people that wanted to go for free lunch, which who wouldn't want to go for free lunch and breakfast and kind of just get out of the office. And we spent, yeah, that was probably about 10, a little more than 10 grand just to get in, travel, all of that, and um, had absolutely nothing come from it. And we still get hit up by the, the same organization. We're like, hey, you guys want to come back and sponsor this again? We're like, absolutely not. Like, please take us off your list. Like, it, it's just it was, it was a bad choice for us when we were first starting. And it was a, an expensive hit to, to and learn If that. I can add to, to yours, we did something similar. So uh, if you've got a business, one of the things you'll do is you'll get hit from these magazines and they're like, hey, oh. you've been selected for, and, it, and you, you all know it's, it's it's malarkey, right? But you're like, you know, it's getting out there. And, and the, you tell them no, and then they cut the price back. So we're like, all right. And, and we, we tried it twice. One of them actually wasn't terrible because they actually keep retweeting stuff for us. And they got a decent following. The other one was complete waste, and, and we're 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 done with that now. <laughs> no, no, hard pass. I, I swear, it's like once a week I'll get something like that, fifteen hundred dollars for your like promotion or possible inclusion, and it makes me feel like every time I see Bryson tweet something with like all the salespeople, like all the random sales messages that he gets, I'm just like, oh my gosh, it never ends, does it? Like it never ends. That's 80% of my email at least. Oh, yeah. A good junk mail filter has been slowly starting to go, uh, been worth the effort. Uh, yeah, we, we, we started to add it. I took this cue from Dave Kennedy is we have an, uh, an exchange mail rule that if you, you, you get two tries, you mess up once, we, we keep track. The second time you go in a list and it, it automatically rejects and, and says some inappropriate things in response about spammers. <laughs> Actually, very appropriate because they deserve it. So they, they get a hard, their entire organization immediately blocked. Ironically, I had one of those like talk to a bunch of CISOs uh, marketing emails come in today uh, where they sent okay. me the email and they sent me that same email again within two minutes. So it would have immediately broken your filter. There you go. Yeah. So Matt, what's your what's your big uh, your big fail? My turn, I may as well share the love because I've done tests with uh, uh, both Chris and uh, Tim. And so, so one of my biggest fails, maybe the biggest, in fact, was a red team I was doing with Chris, actually. And we were hacking a casino. Oh, oh yeah. You know, fun stuff. You know the story, right, Chris? Yeah. I do remember. <laughs> I forgot. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So we're hacking a casino. You're like, oh, yeah, burst that dirt off my shoulder. This is what I'm doing red team for. This is what I always wanted. Um, and so, so I'm, I'm lead on it and, and, uh, I'm working with Chris and, uh, we've got a web app and they also have the casino that we're going after. And I'm supposed to be doing the web app first and then we're going to do a lot of the red teaming together, but they're running a little bit in parallel, but it started off a little funky. So we got this, this, this email in from, uh, their CISO to, to get this all sorted uh, to get it started. Right. And we do all the scheduling and all that stuff, but they were, he was emailing us from a Gmail. Okay, a little bit of red flags here already, right? But of course, you gotta you gotta verify exactly who that is. We're on the phone with him. We talked to him. Yes, it was in fact the exact person that we thought it was. It was the right person. It wasn't just some random person hiring us to do a red team for a casino illegally. No, this was actually the CISO. Uh, and the reason why he <laughs> wanted to uh, to communicate with us on this uh, uh, this Gmail was because he said, "Hi, hey, the the security team. They are watching uh, the email the whole time, and I want to make sure this is a not announced test because I want to test them." 
uh, without them knowing. Like, okay, that, I, I buy it, makes sense. And so we started doing this test and we scheduled this red team for, I don't know, three or six weeks. It was actually scheduled, I think it was six weeks. It's actually scheduled for a pretty darn long red team. Yeah. And so oh. this, this, this CISO was really, really, really needy. So like, uh, I'm on the phone with him like weeks before the test on an almost daily basis because he's got he's got to like get this thing right and he wants to check this box off and he wants to see if we're going to do that and so on and so on we're being nice about it but like literally by the time we hit the test i'm already like 40 hours invested in this engagement I'm like wow please stop now please and so we start the test and on test day of course he's really really verbose with me again uh the whole time so i'm like i'm literally not getting to test whatsoever um, i'm talking with chris a little bit and he's doing the red team he's got he's got cobalt strike booted up all this kind of stuff and within like two hours and i've basically been on the phone with the guy the entire time over this two-hour period within two hours chris domain admin on the uh uh the the casino the whole thing's gone she's like got it okay hey do you want to start dialing with the noise he's like oh wow you're already you're already there huh oh okay um, let me get back to you real quick. He does some stuff. I maybe like throw a packet or two at the web app at this point. Um, and he comes back and he's like, okay, yeah, go ahead and dial up some noise. Yeah, we do. And eventually the blue team, they, they catch on to something. So we just, we're dialing up as much as we can. I just start dropping metasploits in random places to get them to look. They find it. Chris is in the email, right? He's in their email. And he's watching their IR happen. Their, their, their incident handling is like, oh yeah, they see it. They fix it. They think it's completely eradicated. It's like, oh yeah, we're ready to move on. We just like face palm the whole time. It's like, oh no. So first failure, <laughs> casino. Second failure, here gets here's where it gets crazy. It turns out next day comes around, and uh the 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 CISO's like starting to sweat bullets, and he can hear a lot of like nervous tension in his voice. And over the course of the next couple of days, we realize that this test is not only not announced to the blue team, it's not announced to anybody in management of the casino at all. And he was specifically told not to do a third party test at all either. So we're a couple of days into the six week test and we're like, we are out, we're done, completely done. Um, but also I've been communicating with this guy the whole time. I've barely gotten to do any testing whatsoever. Chris gets to do all the fun red team stuff, hack casino, and I'm sitting here playing with his web app, but I barely got to touch the web app. So I'm like still at the very beginning of the scanning piece because I've gotten to do nothing except talk with him. And now it's like, okay, we're just gonna deliver a report with what we've got. I'm like, I'm gonna do a web app pen test report with a Nikto scan? I don't know. I found <laughs> nothing because I'd spent no time on it. So I'm like, ah. And it was absolutely the most garbage report I've A ever made, was embarrassed for it. So, so I actually spent the rest of like the report time that I could do just doing as much OSINT against the web app as I possibly could. Cause we're like, we're not touching any of your stuff ever again. <laughs> also fired the customer. Awesome. So yeah, uh, fails all around there, except for Chris. He owned the entire. Uh, no, that's, that's a rough, I mean, that's a scary one, right? Like you, you think you're operating legitimately, like you got the documentation. I mean, legally you should be more than covered, but like, you don't know just the threat of a lawsuit. Just, I mean, you got to go to court regardless. You're probably going to win, but now you're still in court like that. That's a scary situation. Like I don't want to be in. Like that, yeah, rough. absolutely. That's the worst nightmare style. I mean, it's all about negligence, right? And so if you can, sh because it's going to be a civil case, so it's preponderance of the evidence, which means if you can show uh, that you have done due diligence, which we absolutely did, right? We There was this Gmail thing that was a little weird. That was definitely a red flag. Uh, but then we identified exactly who this person was. It was the right person. They were the CISO. Uh, we had every reason to believe that what we were doing was completely above board, which it was just not on the CISO's side. So yeah we wouldn't have lost but that's still that's not a fight that you want to even yeah. have to have on the bright side the yeah. casino completely blamed the CISO, which i think that's probably a good call on their part and it didn't actually turn out poorly it was just uh wow wow yeah so yeah I have a, you I guys have ever a have oh sorry go oh, on. sorry go no you have right no, yeah i have a derivative of that one um where uh, it's not quite the same whereas like the so it was for a large auto manufacturer and we had of course we had we had legal approval which took for forever for that and the it was an entire car and scope um but what was what the challenge is is i think there were probably about 15 to 20 different product teams that were a part of the scope of the assessment and they all didn't necessarily agree with this idea of having a third party do this and so we had um you know we had the we were we were there was no question of the legality of what we were doing but the the test was a constant fight for documentation and detail because of course you know you, you only have so much time to do that kind of test 
and the more you have to spend reverse engineering and going and figuring things out, the you know the more expensive and the longer it has, and the more likely your project is to fail. Um, I think the funny cap on that one is we ended up finding, um, and it became a finding in our report, but it was technically out of scope was because of the challenges we had working with the different teams, we went out and found a Russian file server with all of their like proprietary files. So it, we ended up like finding this stuff that really helped us do our job because they didn't give it to us, but it was some random Russian server where it was. Oh my God. <laughs> wow. You guys ever have a, a customer give you like out of scope IP ranges? All the time. Yep. Test our test our part. Not on purpose. Yeah, but not on purpose. Yeah. Is most of the well, I've had, like, I've had it on purpose. <laughs> really? Yeah, I, I I haven't either. It's always scary though when we're starting kicking off our initial stuff. Thank God, like it's never hit the exploitation or like any phase like that. It's usually when we're doing scans, like looking at what's going on, and then we're realizing this this doesn't look right, and we have to very quickly try to call them just to see like what do you do you own this are you sure you do and then it's like oh I, th there was like a slash that should have been like a slash 24 instead of a 22 or something like that and it's uh been interesting yeah we had one that they were trying to onboard a vendor and they uh had some they were doing like their internal review on, on the security of this organization right all the questionnaires data center crap right all that junk and they're like yeah we need to test this vendor and we started talking and they started picking up like this something seems off and it, i'm like and ask the question like do you have authorization i'm like yeah okay and at, at the surface yeah. level i mean you, i mean why, why would you not think that they would but eventually it's like this this is a vendor and we're testing them like do you have approval in paperwork like we had to get more and more and more specific and eventually they're like well no we don't have that I'm like oh my god I'm like this is not gonna i want to get shell on this thing and we're gonna get arrested like terrible <laughs> Okay. I got I got two two ones in two different directions. Um, international, right? So the first is um, Canada. While it is our friendly neighbor to the north, trying to do work in Canada is actually really, 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 really hard to do. Um, and it, you know, it takes all these hoops because you have to justify that there is nobody there that can do it to to get right. it. But that wasn't what got us. Um, we actually had somebody on the on the flight there got stopped by customs and during interrogation they realized that they were going there for work <laughs> we, you know we had a we had a gig and so it was uh he, we we were given the riot act of like don't you ever dare do this again like we'll stop you um and so we, we learned that one um the second one was oh, what's your flag because they'll flag your account you're the flag your yeah. profile and every time yeah. now you get that extra round yeah I, I i now have that sir come to this line oh well i mean Sid, you naturally invite it so the the second one it was trying to hire um somebody in the european union um and it's the same kind of thing like once you start looking at like we, we we had negotiated, we had gone through things, and we didn't realize that the the terms of trying to work with that country and then the uh, a you know a citizen of the European Union and it it killed the whole thing because we were just like uh, as far as we can tell, even if we tried to 1099 you, this is going to take us like two to three months of like dedicated legal effort. Oh, and we had to rescind, which which was sucked. Yeah. Hiring people is is hard. We I remember when we were looking to do um, we were looking to bring on an intern at the time, and um, uh, we had like a kind of like a test, just like a base, just to see where people are, um, like what you can do, like what skill set do you have? It's like super minimal. Probably took like an hour, maybe of your time, just so we could see what people were doing, and um, uh, had a bunch of people request for it, and so we had only a couple like responses back, and. Um, I remember one person I thought like did actually a pretty decent job. And so we, we ended up talking with them and uh, I get on the phone and, or they, they give me a call back and they're like, Hey, I'm so-and-so. Um, uh, I just want to let you know, first of all, that um, I cheated on your text. And like, what, how do you cheat on that? I was like, okay. And they're like, 
I had my my friend do the whole thing. Um, I actually didn't like do it at all. And I was like, okay, this this conversation's starting great. And this, <laughs> I, I was basically on the phone for like 30 minutes uh, with this, because I didn't want to be like rude and just cut them off or anything. But it was, it was basically them telling me cut that they, it. yeah, they had their friend do the test and uh, they didn't understand it, but they still wanted me to bring them on board. That's like I. I appreciate the effort and I applaud you, but like I, I've never had someone either before then in my career or since then ever tell me that they just outright didn't do the test, gave it to someone else, and then still thought that they were like they they should be hired there and brought on. So it was a uh, it was a weird weird scenario. I've just not had that before. I've had so for uh, for hiring, we always ask for a writing sample, and I'm I'm a little bit vague like hey i want to see what does it look like when you write a report and i'm kind of vague because i'm like i want to see what do they think um three times in my career i had somebody send me an internal pen test report a, from their company and they attempted to redact it redaction is exceptionally hard um and in, in all three cases i'm like cool i can see this company name and you gave me a hack by numbers. You have violated your company's NDA. You violated their NDA. I, literally, the, the phone call, I, I'm much more direct than Chris. I was like, look, here's the deal. You will never work here because you will, you, you're going to you're gonna take our client data and just share it with random people whenever the hell you feel like that. But it was literally a hack yeah. by numbers. And one of them had like really, really bad redaction. And they redacted, they did a search and replace, but all of the image had the company names and domain names. There were passwords in there that, probably still it was like oh like, this isn't even a teaching moment you're applying for a senior position like you're done for all time like and it, like i said three times i've seen this it, it's uh by the way people listening don't do that don't 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 no don't cheat yeah, i've seen something like don't that before your internal private work uh do it yourself yeah one of the bright sides about being a smaller company is that i i don't i've never hired someone who i haven't known personally um, for at least a little while, so you get to you get to miss out on a lot of those fails, <laughs> um, but that doesn't scale. Um, I have seen something similar to that report though, where I've done a, I've done a pen test for an organization, and um, uh, they provision like an internal system to do an internal pen test, which is a Windows device with some stuff on it, and they let you access it. And so I, I log into this Windows device, right? And I'm looking at the desktop, and there's a bunch of things already installed. I see like Nmaps there, so there's Zenmap logos over there. I'm like, oh, they can configure this device for me. That's really nice of them. And I open up the My Documents folder, right? And what do I see? It's last year's pen test report. No. No. Yeah. Ah. And guess what? So I open up the pen test report. I'm like, okay, let's see what they did. Let's see what worked last year. And the pen tester got domain admin and they didn't redact anything in the report at all. So to be fair, I'd never put a pen test report out there where the domain admin password is in plain text in the pen test report. That's, don't do that. And so, because I mean, the idea of course is if you find the domain admin password, that should probably get changed, right? So you might think, oh, I can put it in the pen test report because they're going to change that, right? Guess what? No. So the first thing I try on this pen test is I just like, oh, okay, see if it still works. Yeah, it worked. It worked just fine. That's the shortest path to domain admin I've ever had. We had one <laughs> where we, I, I enumerated users and it was another pen test company and I saw an account and it was, a, I enumerated the domain admins and it was a pen test company that, that I, I, we're all probably quite familiar with that was in that group. And I'm like, I'm going to guess that the password is the same as the username and it worked. And I was like, oh, no. And I had to write this up and I'm like, so I found this account. For, <laughs> for an organization and the password was the same <laughs> it was a uh, it was uncomfortable but i laughed it was not that uncomfortable i just pretended it kind of was <laughs> did they did they appreciate the the like stupidity of that like we should never hire them again kind of thing I mean, I don't know whose stupidity is worse, right? Because like, you, they, I presume they put this in last year's report that we got domain admin and you should clean up this account and they clearly never i mean I, 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 there's layers I, I don't know it's like an onion that was yeah. dunked in poop i don't know to be fair that's a really common thing that i will see actually uh it's like all the time not necessarily that the password is the same as the username but where there's a pen test company that i can recognize and there's an account that is in active directory 
from that company. It's probably that organization, like the, the, the organization that you're testing, not the pen test company, who made that account. And in the scope of work and the rules of engagement, there's probably a bunch of things that say, okay, you need to take, you need to deprovision all of these things after the pen test. Um, so we can go back to, you know, standard or whatever it is. Uh, but as the pen test firm, honestly, you should never trust the customer to do the right thing ever. On the other hand, though, it's also a little bit tough because what if you're going back in to do remediation uh, validation, right? So you maybe don't want to get rid of the account and deprovision them until after that phase happens. But what if they never actually bring you back in to do that because they didn't actually follow through on the whole scope? Now you've got all of these little things going around. But as a result, I end up seeing that all the time. We have Just related to that. Not with we really have passwords. We, we <laughs> ship a, like a, a VM for remote testing. We have a client from two years ago. Their VM is still trying to check back into our infrastructure. Oh. <laughs> two years two years you're like why what is this ip like oh right that's mm. <laughs> I, I assume you've tried to inform them we've we're, we've done other we, we're doing another test we finished it like a month ago we're like hey by the way can you can you deprovision this other box I'm like oh yeah we're, we're on top of that they are not <laughs> yeah. i've seen that kind of thing a couple times in a little like a sideline manner uh where i've identified a like a SANS VM from like a SANS class in an enterprise environment. And uh -huh. SANS instructor, I know the default passwords to those, so just log straight in. Um, I've seen that more than once. I've seen that more than once. It's like, oh, your yeah, password and username are sec560. Huh. Well, since we're complaining about clients now and client fails, um, we've all had the we've all had the experience, right, of the, the client who shows up and is like, I want a penetration test. And you're always, of course, like, what does that mean to you? What do you what do you think you're asking me for? Right? Like let's let's get on the same definition of vocabulary. Um, and the price range usually dictates that answer as well. You know, uh, well, like I, uh, this this should be five thousand dollars. What do you think we can do for five thousand dollars? Right? Like this is the you want me to just give you a Nessus report? Like you can't run your own? Like what what do you want? Um, and uh, that so that that like that delta of definition where you know of course fixing up what a pen test is what the scope is what's a red team versus what a pen test is and a vulnerability assessment why something costs what it costs and the expense and the time that it takes to do that um, and um, of course going back to my my other automotive manufacturer example but um, that same problem again where they they delay they delay they delay and they're like hey can you do this tomorrow and you're like I'm still wait for the documentation because we haven't confirmed scope for me able bill to do this properly. I've had a uh, happen a couple times in my career. I can't remember the most recent time, but um we're setting up like infrastructure where we're doing pen uh it was a pen test against an organization and um get through the assessment like we've got C2 outbound and everything and um we've been able to do the test and everything went well and it was over with and so we go through and clean up and we have documentation that we use internally which i'm sure everyone does that uh we check see okay where do we have like access to what modifications we make to systems um and make sure that we basically revert everything back to the original state um so we go through all of that check everything off and call it a day at the end of the test and it'd be like two weeks later oh this happened multiple times uh that customer would be like hey are you guys still active in our environment we're like no and uh, they're like, well, we're, we're seeing systems beaconing out to where you're using for C2. And I was like, there's there's no way. And so we'll go and check. And um, sure enough, we had like active sessions inside their environment. Like, well, what is going on? Like, how did that happen? We, we had no idea. And um, kill access. And uh, basically two weeks later, uh, same exact phone call again. And they're like, are, why are you guys still inside our environment? And we we're like we just went through this last week like I, I don't know what to tell you and uh since then we, we've learned to tell them to check for this and they're like okay we're gonna do some investigation on our side and uh in the middle of the assessment this customer had taken a, a backup a, a live backup of multiple systems when we had access to their systems and so about every two weeks they were rolling back to that snapshot and we would get sessions coming back in in our systems and um it was it was interesting because ever since it happened the first time We've learned, okay, we know we cleaned off. I um, mean, that's not necessarily like a client fail either. That just happened to be bad timing, but it it was a, a funny situation where we're like, I, we're really bad at our job if we can't figure out like why we can't get you to stop calling back to us. It was a, 
it was a unique one. Yeah, I've seen a bunch of fairly fairly Good. similar like backup problems happen, uh, where uh, in this case it was just they had it they had a cycle to revert to snapshot on something all the time, but it kept reverting their patches off. Um, there's like a couple fails that were happening at the same time here. So this this organization oh. had like their domain admin had had their password found by the pen tester uh, three years running. And so they were really, really like antsy about I'm not going to get caught this year. I'm not going to get caught this year. And so I find a system and this is this is like yeah, last year or so. So this is actually fairly recent and um, it's it's vulnerable to eternal blue. And I'm like, what? Oh, come on. Easy peasy. So we, we just <laughs> we get we get in. And uh, we were able to mimic cats. Uh, Crunchal Guard was disabled and get the domain admin password. And I, I, I happened to do this on a Friday, like it's Friday evening. And I'm like, ah, man, I'm not going to just get domain admin and then stop. So I continued to just basically finish the entire pen test over the weekend. And on Monday, I realized because I'm doing reporting, I'm missing a screenshot. So I go back into the environment, domain admin password doesn't work anymore. Huh. Fortunately, they'd reverted the snapshots off again. So we were just able to get it back. In the review of the test, here's what actually happened. That domain administrator, the entire test window, because this was a, uh, like a crystal box test, right? So the new testing was going on. The entire test window, the only thing he did there is he sat there and kept resetting his password every 15 minutes the entire time. So I was really quite lucky to get in uh, and get DA on Friday evening because he went home. And so I didn't, I didn't recognize that this was happening at all until Monday when it didn't work anymore. Uh, fortunately, there was some nasty solar wind stuff, so that was still easy to get back to DNA. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, that was funny. That was hilarious. I had a, a, a Tim fail. It was um, this was way back in the day. I was with Fishnet before they merged with Optiv, and uh, we, were, we were doing a physical onsite, which those are a ton of fun. So always rule of thumb: always carry the get out of jail free card with you, right? Let's get out of my car, put it in my bag, and realize I was going to walk around, so I left the bag in the car and uh started walking around and, and uh try to get in i get confronted by security i'm like hey cool let me show you my get out of jail free card i'm like oh that's not in my pocket that's in my bag cool walk through with me to the car i like i trust me i'm actually i get back to the car i've locked my trust keys me. inside the car now too oh, because God. they were in the bag so now i'm trying to convince this guy not to call the cops i'm like no no, no. seriously Really, this, this, this is my car. You can believe me. Yes, that's my bag. Uh, and I'm calling my wife. I'm like, look, I need you to like literally drop everything and drive the hour to where I'm working as fast as you possibly can with a set of keys <laughs> or else. Oh, boy. Because <laughs> I'm absolutely screwed. And the guy had like a, the, the, I was working with like, his name was like Harry. And he had this like name that was like 15 characters long. I had no idea to pronounce it. Who are you working with? Harry. You know, blah, 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 blah. I, 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 oh I got nothing, right? I'm like, that's in my phone, which I, or in my laptop, which is in the bag with the keys, the get jail free card, all in the car. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. And I got busted, didn't even get in. Meanwhile, co worker flies around oh. the world and shreds a foreign country. I had a very similar yeah, physical security assessment. Where we uh, we were breaking into a bank, and uh, so we're in the bank, right, branch office, and we uh, we get in easy. It was the uh, the front doors. You could just um, do they were they would open movement, so we just waited in uh, the, the co-locate areas, and then we just waved something through the doors, and we got in. So so we're in the bank, we're doing all kinds of stuff, and we're about to leave because we're done. And I go to the printer because I'm like, okay, there's sometimes sensitive documentation in the printer. I'm gonna take a couple pictures for the report. Um, and the first document that's on top of the printer is a franchise agreement. And I go, holy crap, what franchise agreement on the planet allows corporate to hire random people to break into your office and do whatever the heck they want? There's no franchise agreement on the planet that possibly says that. So I'm like, we got to go. Let's get out of here right now. And we leave. Um, and the next day, I'm, I'm starting to write up the report and all that kind of stuff. And I realize I can't find my notes. I'm a little old school. And I take all of my notes in uh, like, like a, a notebook. Um, it's it's because I used to work in a skiff with the military, so you can't really, you know, you got to write all down on paper or whatnot. Um, so I take all my notes in a notebook, and I realize, oh gosh, cold sweats. I left my notebook with every single step that I did to break into this place in that place. Hmm. Um, I had to ask them for my notebook back very nicely. <laughs> they thought that corporate was allowed to send us in there, so they did give me the notebook back, and I never told them that we were not supposed to be in there, and we just didn't know. 
Oops. So now I've added a question to our Q&A when we're setting up a physical test that we will always ask. Do you know anything about franchises and does your organization do anything related to franchises? I want to know it all. <laughs> um, yeah, that was an oops. Uh, but unlike Tim, I didn't get caught, so. There you go. <laughs> Tim, you're on mute. Yeah. Since we're being recorded, I can't say too much. Uh, I had a coworker do a test, and the uh, the organization was renting the uh, the, the place from the uh, the government. Didn't disclose that ahead of time, and uh, had to frantically leave the country, and will never go back. It's a great story. <laughs> Not right now. <laughs> uh, that is a fair story. story. I want to hear. It is a really good story. Yeah. Uh, I have, I guess, a similar one like that where I was somewhere and um, I think we take for granted in the United States that like our our government stuff, like things that are classified are treated as classified and they're marked and they're only available in certain places. And, like that's obvious. Well, um, this this country, this place had top secret documents like on a, somebody's random office wall. <laughs> and I just like walked up to him. I'm like, look at him. I'm like, uh, what's that? And he, the guy was like, oh yeah, you shouldn't be seeing that. I'm like, <laughs> that, that was it. Like, it, it was like, it was an entire, it was an entire sketch of the intelligence organization, uh, oh. which I had nothing to do with. So we're clear. Like I, I wasn't affiliated with that. It's just, this guy happened to have that in that, and I had access to it. And so I was just sitting there. I'm like, this has got to be the worst stop sack of all time. <laughs> So I, I, uh, we, uh, we all, so a friend of mine, actually, I think most of you know him. Um, I don't know if I, I can think of Brett's help, Mark's, Mark's name. He was teaching a class in a skiff, not cleared. So little siren is on, right? And he pulls up the article, like the Snowden thing had recently uh, happened. Well, in the news article on the website, it shows a picture and it says like secret above the picture. And someone's like, sorry, um, we have to pull this down because there's uncleared people in here and they can't see that. He's like, I mean, I'm the uncleared person. It's, it's me who you're afraid of seeing that, but I'm the one that's showing it to you. And they're like, no, can't do it. Sorry, the, the lights on you, 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 we have to shut this down. Nobody can look. It was this whole weird circle. He's like, yeah, but, but I'm the one with the, it, it was a lovely <laughs> entertaining circular reasoning that, uh, ironically works in the government stuff uh, you said the word works were you sure that that's the word you were trying to use yeah, it's not the right word not the right word <laughs> work efficiently like uh, quickly oh not that often but i had but you personal see that in, I've heard that in conferences where someone will say they would grab something from snowden and they're like well, i'm gonna have to show you secret documents so if you're government people you have to leave so you see a bunch of people who are like, I don't, I don't, I don't know what to do here. You're like, Fed, 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 Fed. <laughs> yeah, no. So this is actually this is true. Um, even if something is on the internet, if it has been marked as secret or top secret, somebody with a clearance technically is not supposed to look at it because that violates right. your clearance to look at something that is readily available. Right, but they, yeah. they were trying, at the talk thing. They're like, "Wait, what's worse, outing myself as someone with that, or sitting here, and brain hurts?" <laughs> it, was it also works with labeling too. So, so one of those pranks that you would always pull in like a skiff is if somebody was like working on a document or something and they printed it out. Uh, what you would do is you would just like grab a marker or a sharpie and you would just like go uh, S I T K T S right on top of it, and they can't take it out of the uh, the skiff anymore because it's it's marked. It must be true. Well, I heard somebody was, they grabbed some of those stickers and like, it'd be fun to put this on my laptop. And then oh, had yeah. a, a big red sticker on his laptop at the TSA. And the TSA is like, mm, we're done here. TSA. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's contraband, right? I mean, technically, they, I mean, I'm sure some of those guys were former military in some shirt, like sort of oh. some way, shape, or form. So they're like, I don't know what to do. Brain lock. We're taking this right now. It was a, yeah. They it took was, my laptop. Really they had this my giant like multiple stickers. Yeah. It was like all over the back with different, you know, green and, and orange and red. And that's when you grab another one of those stickers and you just slap it on their back. Yeah. All right. Well, bringing this to a close, uh, Tim, you got any last ones? I, I have. 
Yeah, probably. I, yeah, but I don't remember. <laughs> All right, no problem, Chris. I mean, I, I just can think of like personal fa failures that I, I have to ask like Tim for help. Like, I, I feel like I'm pretty decent at like hacking stuff, but when I see the like SSH port forwarding like madness that like Tim or like everyone else does, I'm like trying to pull out a calculator and like figure out what like what what I'm doing. That 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 and using Microsoft Office products like intelligently has probably been like some of the biggest issues that I have. Whereas like, all right, I need to like pivot table, like pivot table. Like, I can do this. <laughs> I knew or, it was like, Excel that you were out. talking about because you're a business owner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah. We're on the same page there, but that's about like, okay, can I please figure this out and not take like three hours to get this done right? But that, people that's, ask that's, you like, like my. People ask like, what are you really good at? Excel. Oh, like Excel payloads and macros. <laughs> Just numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, you got anything? Yeah, Tim will like this one uh, real quick. Um, so I was doing a red team with Tim, and um, so so I'm sitting here, and I was I was like a pickup. Yeah, you know, it's exactly what I'm going with this. This is a pickup red team kind of. So uh, so Tim was there, uh, Joe Vest was there, and they they were supposed to be there, but last minute they're like, you know what? We need to just add a third. We just need to get a third in on this. And like, hey, uh, who's gonna who's good for a pickup red? Team? Matt, come over here. Come over here, Matt. And so I fly out there. Uh, we're in the middle of flyover state, uh, Indiana. And uh, I'm doing red team with Tim, and I show up and I'm like, oh, hey, Matt, we didn't know you were going to be here. Uh, we don't have a plan for any of the Linux systems. Have fun. And so I'm like, okay, um, Netcat, SSH, Wizardry, that kind of stuff. And um, I get access to a bunch of things. Like I'm hacking away and I'm winning. Like I am owning everything. And Tim's over here sitting right next to me, and he's doing a lot of PowerShell Empire, but he's trying to make a lot of noise with it. And he's just not getting anything to work at all. And he starts getting more and more and more and more frustrated. And at a certain point in time, he just starts getting shells out of nowhere, but they never fully stage. And he's like, gosh, I don't even think I loaded anything. I don't know where this is coming from. What? What? Hey, no, I had and I'm on the other side, and now I'm getting more frustrated because I'm like, I was hacking all kinds of things so well, and I was getting access to different stuff, and I was doing uh, you know, all kinds of stuff, right? And now nothing's working anymore. And I look over at Tim, and I realize that he's getting shells from me because I have fat fingered my L host and I'm like hitting it over here, hitting it over there, left, right, center. And Tim's just like getting shells, shell, shell, shell. Well, Matt over here is like, man, I need to hang up my red team card because I suck. <laughs> so, there's my fail story. Yeah, the, 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 oh, just to add to that, I had, I had Metasploit running in another tab and then I flipped over to it by accident and I just see pages of new session new session i'm like how many digits can you get in sessions <laughs> <laughs> session 5000 has opened yeah Bryson, well, what about you oh uh, my last one. i'll i'll end with a, a business one um which is i think something we can all appreciate uh in in the beginning right when when the company starts and the honeymoon period ends and you start to realize nobody ever pays you on time um, you start meeting all of the different vagaries of customers who um, refuse to pay you for something or take advantage of your something. Um, and then, of course, like I said, just the, the general, they don't pay on time. And that was that was the first moment where we almost broke. Um, I can't remember if it was, uh, I want to say that it was like Christmas of 2014. And we were two days away from um, like not being able to make it. And I started dialing for dollars because I had six customers at that time. And I was just like, if one of you just gave me a check, if just one of you would please give me a check, like I could get through payroll, like I can, we can make it another payroll period. And then like, you know, you know, as you know, right, it's one problem at a time. And so I dialed for dollars and it was like right before the deadline that somebody e, e deposited me money um, on a personal appeal uh, to allow us to keep going. Oh, I feel for you. I know. I have one related to that. We had two different accounts because I like them to deposit into one account so they can't, and I'll immediately sweep that over. ZDA. Uh, but right before payroll, I reversed all of the, I did the transaction in the reverse order. So I literally every overdrew every single account. And, I, and I'm in Singapore, so I'm trying to get this done really quickly because I'm like, oh, crap, time zones. This is going to happen. 
literally overdrew every single account because everything transferred the wrong ways, except for this one stupid account that it had all of the money. It, oh, so dumb. All right. Well, gentlemen, good to see you all again. Callie, hold on. Relax. That's <laughs> my dog, Callie, K-A-L-I, um, which is a CTF challenge for those of you paying attention for one of our challenges. Uh, so good to see you all. And I look forward to the time that we can do it in person because I definitely want to hear the rest of Tim's forum story. Same. Same, same. Yeah, hard same. <laughs> it, you need to hear that awesome. story. Thanks a lot for having us. Thanks, everybody. So we're going to be closing out our fifth GrimCon here. Uh, thank you to volunteers. Thank you to the MCs, my fabulous fellow MC, Tricia Howard, the other unicorn, and Meryl and Wade on track two, and Dwayne with the workshop and uh, Texas Cyber Summit, and also hacking is not a crime um, for making this an awesome GrimCon. Um, all the videos except for. Um, John's will be posted to the YouTube channel. And that last week of December, six months from now, will be the next GrimCon number six. So if you know anybody who could benefit from getting that first talk, taking that first leap on the stage, we want to see them. And I'm going to hold Trisha to it. Trisha is going to come on the cooking show next year. And we're going to record that rap. And yes, we will. 100%. Yes, we will. Do you have any final words, Trisha? No, just thank you so much uh, for letting me hang out with you today. This was like, this was so much fun. And, you know, thank you so much to uh, the Grim team and uh, all of our speakers. It was super, super awesome. Wrote down some amazing things. Uh, and as somebody who dipped their toe into speaking, keynote speaking at GrimCon, I can say uh, for new speakers, if you are interested to type, tie into what he was saying, um, it is a super safe and awesome place to do it here. So if you are looking for a place to uh, kick off your, your speaking shoes, Grim is the place to go. And also uh, shout out to uh, Share the Mic and Cyber, um, who was our partner on the new speaker track. Um, fantastic work from them. And um, I'm forgetting somebody else. Oh, and of course, the check out the swag store with the proceeds going to Black Girls Code. Yep. Awesome. Dance party. It's happy hour time, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, Dan Weiss's happy hour is, is kicking off now. Um, the link is in the Discord. And then Kenny and I are going to be making Asian wedding soup on Unicorn Chef in 30 minutes. Cool, cool. Well... It's a pleasure as always. See y'all. See you on the Twitters. Bye. Bye.